Hello, I am back. I'm finally back. I can really do a sit down video. I'm going to medical school. This video, I didn't even plan it, so it's gonna be out of the place, but I will put timestamps down for this video. So, um, how. Let me, let me answer that one later. What do you do when you lose motivation? By the way, I love your account and you're so pretty. Thank you. Oh, this one. How is your mental health as a YouTuber? Terrible. Um, become a doctor. I have my plane tickets. And so for my future videos, a lot of them are going to be med school. And tourists do touristy things. I'm going to be bringing my camera with me all along. When I was applying to med school, I would cry every single day. So I closed up afterwards. I didn't tell anyone I was applying to med school. I didn't tell anyone about my future plans. I remember there was an interview question. If you need motivation that works as well, you can try that. But it was a bit crazy. Rejection is redirection. So yeah, I'm starting to accept it. Next. Here we are. I'm back with the sit down video. This is my first time doing a sit down video in a while and I usually never do sit down videos so something new and I'll be talking about something new today. It is a life update and kind of a Q&A video because I originally wanted to do a Q&A video but then maybe a life update video was better but then I already asked for some questions on Instagram. There weren't too many of them and I feel like I also can talk about some of the questions in my life update section so it's gonna be a mix of both. Okay so let me check my questions. What is my MBTI? I always forget about this one so I always have to check my email but I just did the test before this video and it is ENTP. I, I'm not really into MBTIs because I don't really like my current one and they're just too hard to memorize. Yeah, it's ENTP, but I think I had an orange one before. I'm not sure if this one's really accurate. I don't think it's accurate, but maybe it is. Next question, how are you so productive? I am not. I have a terrible sleep schedule and I procrastinate a lot. Your videos are so organized. That is untrue. This video, I didn't even plan it, so it's gonna be out of the place, but I will put timestamps down for this video. So if you have a specific portion that you want to see a specific question, you can go straight to the timestamps and go to that section. I will also put subtitles. So if you are still learning English, you can go to the subtitles as well. Um, how, let me, let me answer that one later. I just lost it. Where are my responses? I I only have I only have some questions screenshotted and it's not that many questions. So the Q and A section is gonna be a lot shorter, sadly. Okay, this question: Want to be a loner or have family? Thoughts on these? Um, I want to have family for sure. I I'm scared that I might be a loner. How do you find a drive to do something? when you're absolutely tired. You're doing great, by the way. Heart. Um, thank you. But, uh, I guess thinking about the consequences of not doing it, how would it impact me? How would it affect my life? What would be the benefits if I do it? I usually listen to music when I lose motivation and I look for study vlogs as well on YouTube. What do you like to do the most? go on my phone <laughs> um that for sure but uh i would die if i had to do this every single day it's something i like to do but i don't prefer to do it okay what do you do when you lose motivation by the way i love your account and you're so pretty thank you again i like to listen to music when i lose motivation or when i have to study but i don't want to i usually film a study video or study with me video and it just forces me to study and i can't go on my phone because I'm filming a study video. It would look bad if I was on my phone the entire time. Oh, this one. How How is your mental health as a YouTuber? Terrible. Career goals, um, become a doctor. Speaking of mental health and career goals, um, 
my mental health as a student was also terrible. There's just so much stress from tests, exams, education, friends, so many places. And speaking of becoming a doctor, I'm going to medical school this September and that is the life update. I will be studying in Europe and I will be moving there as well. So that is basically my life update. I honestly can't wait. I have my plane tickets and I also have my accommodations booked already and paid for. So I'm for sure going. There's still some small things that are not settled, but I will be going. And so for my future videos, a lot of them are going to be med school vlogs. So subscribe and stay tuned for that. Med school isn't easy, so I will be recording my life. I want to record my life to be able to inspire others and also remind myself of the hard works and what I've been through. Watch them, re-watching them in the future. Maybe when I feel like quitting, maybe when I don't want to do stuff, maybe when I want to drop out. Why do I want to study in Europe? I feel like I always wanted to study abroad. I know this, I knew this since like junior high, since elementary when I was little my mom also knew this she told me and she recommended me if I don't study abroad she recommended me to go to go on exchange programs like study in a foreign country for a little bit studying and versus traveling and visiting a foreign country is different when you study there you just get to experience the culture so much more and so much and a lot thorough also I feel like I've reached a point in my life where I just want to have a new start go to a new place go to a new continent go to a new country go to a new city with no friends no family nothing just myself just meet new people i won't be really caring about people's idea and currently i'm using my camera to film which usually i don't like filming in public and it's just hard for me to step out my comfort zone but going to a new country i'm a tourist and Tourists do touristy things. I'm gonna be bringing my camera with me all along. I think moving to a new place will really help me overcome, not care about people's idea. Moreover, it would help me grow so much as an individual. I feel like it would also strengthen me mentally with all the challenges, difficulties that I may face and encounter going and studying to, in a foreign country. For my future videos, as I already talked about, I'm going to be filming med school and I think I'm going to start a series which I record my life in med school and I might label them with episodes. So stay tuned for that. It will be a few months from now. So in terms of my future videos short term, like next week or maybe next next week, I really need to edit my old footages. I have my Taekwondo referee footages that I still haven't edited and I also have some exam week vlog footages that I haven't edited or posted yet so I'll be trying to do that. Hopefully a new video will be out. Oh, oh yeah, I still have my GoPro unboxing from two years ago that I have not done. I also kind of want to share some of my experience. I was talking about my mental health earlier and when I was applying to med school, I would cry every single day about my application and it was just terrible. I was crying at night, it was bad. I was super scared of not making it in and losing such a big opportunity and I guess not being able to pursue a dream. At one point, I told some people about it, but I guess their responses wasn't really what I was looking for and it kind of made me maybe a bit uncomfortable. It was more like... Why do you why do you not want to study in Canada? Why do you even want to be a doctor? Perhaps I was too sensitive. And I was in a state where it was extremely hard for me to accept much negativity and deal with much negativity. So I closed up afterwards. I didn't tell anyone I was applying to med school. I didn't tell anyone about my future plans, what I was doing, what I was going through. I didn't tell anyone. And Mm, I feel like it was more like protecting myself from all the judgment I might get and all the negativity. I don't want anyone to influence my career decision or impact me in any negative way. So I guess it worked, but I remember there was an interview question where it was like, would you tell your friends, would you tell your co-workers about your hardships if you 
go through something emotional or something. No one asked me this question in my interview, but my answer was kind of, yes, I would. I would tell people about what I was going through. I would, it would help me so much mentally and people may sympathize and expect less from me, I guess. I don't know, um, but I, I think it is hard to find someone, the right person to talk to, to tell what you're going through. It's hard to find that person. And usually because it is so hard, because I don't know who to trust, I default to keeping my emotions to myself, keeping what I'm going through to myself. I'm looking at my bullet points that I have drawn it down. And um, I remember this one talks about reminder, your reminder app. Yep, my, the reminder app. At one point when I was applying to med school, I had a reminder every single hour about my application from the moment when I wake up to nighttime when my phone is on sleep mode so I don't get notifications. Every single hour about... There was also even one every single minute, 10 minutes I think, but every single hour and I was at school, I would get a notification, a notification after another med school application, med school application. It was just so hard for me. It was crazy. I would be, it would put me in so much stress. I would be oh, having a good time in class and then suddenly from my reminder app. Um, yeah, so if you need motivation that works as well, you can try that. But it was a bit crazy. Oh yeah, the time zone differences. The time zone differences for Europe also made me crazy. It was so bad to prepare all of those, those things. Uh, I think I ever mentioned crying at night, but I also cried at school during this time. I never cried at school, but I guess it, this was a hard time and I cried at school. Beginning with the washrooms, I cried in the washrooms and then in class. I just couldn't help it. I was just crying in class. I made sure no nobody noticed me, so that was great. And yeah, I was. Re I remember I was crying in calculus class, and my masks were soaked up, and so I had to get a new one and put it on. And then I would start crying again, and it was soaked up. And yeah, and I, I would leave to go to the washroom during the break. Okay. Um. Uh, hmm. Oh yeah, habits. Preparing for some interviews and preparing for the entrance exams, exams from in school, all these things, like the ethical questions, all this. I was doing questions every single day and I kind of got into a habit of doing questions. It was great. It was really, it really made me realize the powerfulness of habits and it was almost kind of satisfying to do questions to get them done. It just felt great. So if you ever feel a hard time studying just study every day and get it to have it and you just automatically study it just naturally flows but yes I lost, I lost that, 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 that. It's, it's hard, hard. hard. um hmm, let's see dentistry yes when I was applying to med school I also wanted to go into dentistry a little bit because of my brother during a conversation like a family conversation at the dinner table my brother was like oh i'm thinking about doing maybe doing dentistry as a future career and i was like dentistry why would you want to be a dentist uh but also i was getting my braces and after getting my braces i kind of noticed people's teeth more maybe a career in that would be okay i guess but it was kind of the end of application season so it was kind of late i was in a rush i only applied to two maybe one dentistry program school whatever and i didn't make it in i was i honestly when i was applying to dentistry i beat the beginning like after i applied i was kind of sad that i didn't realize i wanted to do dentistry or like earlier but no not dentistry like Medicine has been a lifelong dream, while well, dentistry was a decision two seconds before the end of application season. I don't know if I should talk about this, but the school I'm going, I will be going to, is one of my top choices. But it isn't it isn't the top among the top choices? It isn't a top top choice, and 
Near the end of the school year, as my mental health got better, I had perfect scores in chemistry. I had 100% for the exams. And I really regret that I wasn't working harder during the beginning of the school year for the first few exams. Yeah, I had a really bad grade. And I just feel like I haven't reached my... I didn't know that I had this potential. I didn't know I was capable of doing this well because of how bad I was during the beginning of the year. I feel like I didn't work hard enough during the beginning of the year as well. So I really regret. And I feel like maybe if I worked harder, I could have gotten to one of my top choices, among my top choices. And yeah, it's hard to deal with these rejections. I was watching one of Katie's videos about um, her life lessons and I think it was really helpful. I, I know that I shouldn't be regretting. I also saw many of these books. So these videos, these books, these lessons really helped me in terms of accept, accepting rejection. Maybe those missed opportunities, those things that we consider as missed opportunities are actually creating more opportunities and maybe it's a better path for us maybe it's a path for us an opportunity that's safer that's better and i remember katie talking about her dance uh, audition and her practices which was kind of sad because she got an injury but then that injury helped to bring her relationship with her mom closer so maybe Maybe this isn't a missed opportunity. Maybe the school is better and maybe this will set me on a better path. And I remember one of the titles in her video was Rejection is Redirection. So yeah, I'm starting to accept it. Next, uh, what are my plans for the summer? I'm, I've, I might film some glow up videos I've been really insecure about my body image for years and I will be trying to lose weight during the summer. Oh yeah, I have been struggling to lose weight for a long time so I might be getting a personal trainer to kind of help me out. Maybe I won't, but there is that plan. Uh, oh yeah, take a note. Losing weight is on the top of my list and it's a lot better for my health and I really want to get a get back into taekwondo this year especially sparring i am a black belt but i'm for sure not capable of doing all those kicks anymore because of my weight it's really affecting my health affecting my my body how it fits it's not fit anymore and then i lose breath really quickly so i won't be really able to i won't be really i won't be able to spar because I don't have the energy. My body isn't capable of kicking continuously for such a long time. I just lose my breath so quickly that I can't. And my weight will really put me at a disadvantage with someone possibly taller than me because I'm so heavy. And because I am heavy, it's harder for me to lift my legs, I feel like. It's just harder for me to kick as well. I really lack the energy and health to do sparring. I feel like I'm too fat for sparring right now. Which, not to body shame, but I lose, literally lose my breath in 5 seconds. I would be dead, like, by my opponent. They would just kill me. And another goal I have for this year is to get more dance for black belt. I am a black belt, but I quit. I did quit, um, maybe two years ago, I guess? I don't remember, but I just stopped when I got my first dance. And I really want more dance. I'm, like, a black belt. It just sounds cool, but, like, I'm... A first dan black belt i'm like the beginner black belt like the lowest dan the lowest rank yeah so i will be going to med school and during the summer you'll see me try to lose weight you'll see me try to prepare for med school and hopefully edit more videos and be more productive and that is the life update i'll see you in the next video bye